This is the Good Neighbor Podcast, the place where local businesses and neighbors come together. Here's your host, Mike Sedita. Hello out there. Welcome to episode 135 of the Good Neighbor Podcast. I'm your host, Mike Sedita. Today, we are joined by Dr. Anilda Ortiz. She is with Advanced Optimal Healthcare. How are you doing, Doc? I'm good. How are you, Mike? I, I'm doing great. Thank you so much for being on the Good Neighbor Podcast. I don't know how familiar you are with the Good Neighbor Podcast, what we do, why we got started, etc. But just to get you up to speed, the Good Neighbor Podcast was started in 2020 during COVID when everybody had to be socially distant. I'm sure it was a very exciting time for you as well in healthcare. Um, and over the last now going on four years, the Good Neighbor Podcast has evolved into a national brand. We have podcasts in Colorado, Georgia, Virginia, Florida. I'm lucky enough to be the individual in the Tampa market that gets to talk to business owners like you. So with that being said, tell us a little bit about Advanced Optimal Healthcare. Yeah, um, well, you know, um, that COVID year was also exciting for me um, because that's when I opened my practice. Um, so my practice, Advanced Optimal Healthcare, is a primary care and wellness um, clinic. We're located in Lutz, right at the corner of Sun Lake and North Dale Mabry. Um, but um, what makes the, the practice different from like your traditional practice is that um, we're concierge style. So, and we focus on um, wellness and prevention, not just, you know, coming in when you're sick, when you have a cold, we really um, want to optimize um, our patient's health and health status. So because of that, um, uh, you know, it's concierge style because I, I, I give that personalized care and touch to my patients. Um, so when you say concierge, is it almost like joining, and it's a, probably a bad analogy, but I join a gym and I pay a fee and I get to go and use it when I need to use it. And, and, and you're nodding. So hopefully I'm, I'm on point here. Yes. I sign up with, you know, with your service and I pay my monthly or annual, you know, membership, if you will. <laughs> and then I have access to you for preventative and well, and, you know, and, uh, you know, reactionary healthcare. Exactly. So just um, just like you said, um, it is a monthly membership. So the primary care and wellness are two separate um, services, but your primary care is on a monthly membership. Um, and with that, um, my patients, they have um, direct access to me when they need me. So, you know, same day or next day appoint, appointment availability. So they don't have to wait to be seen when they really need to be seen. There's no waiting in the waiting room. You get to be brought right back when it's your appointment time. 30 minutes or more um, with myself. So there's no rushing. I address all your concerns. I don't dismiss anything. But the best of, of all is that you can text or call me whenever you have any questions or concerns. So you don't necessarily have to come in for an appointment. And if you do need an appointment, then I could see you in person or via telehealth. So it's what's um, convenient and, um, and easy for the patient because um, that's why I'm here. It's for my patients. Okay, so a couple questions off of that. Number yeah. one, and it's just a scenario, and, and and you tell me if this is a fair depiction or if I'm just like Fantasy Island here, but <laughs> I'm your patient, I'm a member of your service, I use your services, yeah. um, and I text you and say, hey, doc, uh, I have a fever or, you know, I have a, I have a congestion and I'm sneezing. Yeah. Is that one of those situations where you could say, hey, Mike, you know, let me let me prescribe an antibiotic or let's jump on a telehealth so I could see you. And then like, is that kind of the the interaction, the way yeah. it goes? Is that mm -hmm. is that the, the convenience? Yeah, you would text me. You'd let me know what's going on. We would have a conversation back and forth via text so I can kind of determine kind of what's going on and how you know, how mild or, or serious it is. If it's something mild, we do, you know, I, I give you some advice, tell you what to do, and then I check up for you in a couple of days. If you're better, good. You didn't need any any treatment, any, medi any medications. If you're not better, then I'll bring you in if I need you, if I need to assess you. But we can easily jump on a telehealth visit. So it just determines the severity. Um, but I don't just necessarily jump to a medication. You mentioned antibiotics. Um, you know, the, it, it, for us here, the key is, you know, we take care of our bodies naturally, right? We let things kind of um, take its course. But if you need treatment, 
then it's there, you know, available. But a lot of times um, medical offices, they, they just want to kind of like move on to the next patient, kind of like just quiet you down. Okay, here, take this medication, take this pill, you'll be fine without really trying to figure out what the issue is. And a lot of times we just need to, you know, just, um, you know, do some natural um, supplements or vitamins and things like that. And our body does the rest. Well, I mean, that's, that's great. I mean, I understand what you're saying, but when someone mm-hmm. is sneezing or sick or headache or sinuses and all that stuff, I mean, it, uh, the old course of action would be call your primary. And if they can't get you in, they send you to the ER to an urgent yes. care yes. Um, to get some sort of medication. So you're saying you don't do that. You're more of a wait and see when you're not feeling good no, type no. deal? No, no, no. So that's the thing. It's all reactive, right? Instead of being proactive, a lot of that's how medicine is. It's here. I get it. It's a it's a band aid, basically, right? Um, For sneezing, you don't need antibiotics. You can take an anti inflammatory if it's due to allergies. A lot of times, you just have a cold. Your body has to naturally fight that off. If not, it won't be strong to fight the big things. So. You know, antibiotics, yes, I do prescribe them when they're needed. If if you have an infection that's there. Like a fever. Fever does not necessarily mean. Tylenol it. usually takes that away, right? Yeah, Tylenol, ibuprofen, yeah. That's why we I have conversations with my patients. Right. You can't just go by, I have this for a day. Okay, take this medication. That's, right, right, right. You know, that's not the best course of action. So, you know, my patients and I, we're partners. Like they, they we have conversations. So that's how I know what's going on with them. I know my patients in and out. So I know if they truly are sick and they need a medication or, uh, hey, you know, you're going to be OK. You're going to feel fine in a couple of days. So let me ask you this. Then that's kind of the primary care side of it. Right. Would that be considered the primary care? What would be the wellness side of it? Is this proactive nutrition and things like that? Yes, that is true. So it's proactive is elevating our health status, keeping us, you know, um, healthy longer, you know, so we can live long, healthy lives. So it's IV hydration that's full of um, uh, vitamins and minerals, amino acids, um, antioxidants to elevate our health. Um, Also vitamin therapy, whether it's via injection, via oral supplements to increase our um, vitamin levels, to improve our immunity, our immune system, increase our energy, things like that. There's a medical weight loss program where I am teaching my patients, you know, lifestyle changes, diet, exercise, um, to help them lose weight along with treatment. But these are lifestyle changes. So once they've gotten to their weight loss goal, they can maintain it, right? Because we go through these dodo, um, yo-yo dieting where we lose weight and then we stop doing whatever it is. And then the weight comes right back. So Um, And then last is our um, hormone replacement therapy. So those are all things to just elevate our health status, make us feel better, healthier, longer. Okay. So you said a whole bunch of stuff there. I have a whole bunch of questions. So (laughs) number one, we're talking from the IV solution type things. You talk about like NADs and like, and B12 shots, that type of stuff. Yes. B12, vitamin C, amino acids, um, magnesium, calcium, all those things. Okay. So that's the second part. That's the the, kind of on the wellness side. And then uh, from the weight loss, we talk about semi-glutide type stuff, or is it, you know, uh, because that's the, that's the latest and greatest thing that's taking the market by storm is semi-glutide. I know Zempic commercial comes on, I think every 17 seconds in in currently. in the the hot item right now. That is a peptide. That is one of the peptides I use. So there's different treatments that I use, but um, semiglutide is one of them, but that's not the only course of treatment. And then from the hormone replacement, is that for guys that are in their 30s and 40s and 50s who have low testosterone, they could come in on the wellness side and and, and get some hormone replacement that way? Is that what we're talking about? Or for, for, for women, men, like pellets? For, yeah. For men and women, whether it's pellets, whether it's topical, creams, patches, there's different um, therapy um, approaches and forms. It just depends on what's the best for that patient. I do an evaluation. We get a full um, blood work, work, blood work, and then depend and going over their symptoms and then deciding what is the best treatment course for them. Because not it's not a one size fits all for right. Everybody. Well, that's what that was going to actually be my next question. Is so from the primary care side of it, hey, it's X amount per month for this access and this care. 
But right. on the wellness side of it, it's more like a menu, right? Like it's like uh, we do the evaluation and based on this patient yeah. profile, you know, and I'm making this up and you could yeah. fix what I'm saying, but like based on patient profile, you could use, uh, you know, a, a drip every month that's going to give you supplementation <laughs> along with t- uh, hormone replacement therapy or X, Y, and Z. And it's all off of menu based a la carte pricing that type is, of thing. Correct. That is a la carte. And, and the patients come in for what they they feel that their, um, their needs are, whether it's um, the IV therapy or the hormone therapy, you know, it could be combined, but some people just come in for a specific reason. Well, so this is a super competitive market that you're you're in, in the in the, the, right. the pond you're playing. I mean, there's a a new drip location that opens every other week, along with an Ozempic commercial that comes on TV every other week. So, right. like, this is a super competitive space that you guys are in, and I'm and I'm assuming you're your goal is to be kind of this one-stop shop for people. They can come to you and you're everything preventative to wellness, you know, and beyond. Correct. Correct. Yeah, it is very competitive. You do see an IV clinic or medical weight loss clinic, um, you know, every five miles. You know, <laughs> what, what, what sets me apart is that I'm not just focusing on one area. It's not, uh, you know, come in for this new service, come in for this new medication. It's holistic I, across the board. It, it's holistic. I practice traditional medicine, but with a holistic and functional medicine approach. I really focus on my patients, you know, figure out what's going on with them, figure out the root cause and and, and come up with a plan, but help them feel good and, free, and elevate their health. It's not Hey, just take this and you'll be good. I'll see you in three months. My patients can see me, call me whenever they want. So they always have access to me. So let me ask you the next level of this from an aesthetics standpoint. Do you guys plan on doing like Morpheus or like like some sort of like uh, whatever you call those machines that help with your your skin tightening or like cool mm-hmm. sculpting? Is yeah. that the next level or is that not in the scope of what you guys want to do? No, that's not in my scope because that's more like a medical spa. Again, I'm bringing healthcare back to its traditional roots, right? Where you had your, your primary doctor, where your family would come. So I see families, you know, kids 15 and older, it's not just adults. So giving the care to the whole family, taking care of everyone where I know um, everything that's going on with everyone. I know what's going on in their lives. So all that plays a role in how people are feeling, right? It's our mental health, our physical health, our spiritual health. So I take care of the whole patient. So that um, those services are great, but it's not the focus of, it, of what you're, okay. So, so let me ask you this question on the personal side of it for you specifically. Yeah. Uh-huh. When you were a little girl, were you uh, fixing all the kids on the playground? Were you putting band aids on kids? Were you were you yeah. playing with your dolls and taking their you know their stethoscope? Was that you always your whole life, or did you want to do something was, different and kind of yeah. move over to this? I was taking care of everyone, even the animals. So I took care of cats, dogs, babies. I mean, I just love caring for people. That's my passion. I mean, that's what I'm the happiest when people just feel good, you know, they could still have a chronic health problem, but if they feel good because of the care I'm providing them, that just makes my day. So I just love, you know, to provide care for people because that's truly what I was meant to do. That's what God put me on this earth for. So when you're coming up and doing this and you said animals, like why go into the people side of it versus the veterinarian side of it? Just because of the feedback you can get from patients if they're people and they can tell you or just more care for that than than animals as far as the the care? I think when I was little, I loved, you know, just like any little girl, you know, we love the cats and the dogs. So that was my, my main focus when I was little. I wanted to be either a veterinarian or a pediatrician. But then as I got older, And in high school, I went through the health magnet where I went to high school. Um, And then I volunteered at the pediatric hospital. And that's where I started my medical career was with pediatrics. So I just fell in love with kids and just, you know, making them feel good. And then as I continued to go through my career and I went back for my master's and my doctorate, um, I decided to go into family practice so I can take care of everyone in the lifespan, not just children. Now you said where you went to school. Did you did you grow up in this area, or are you originally from here? 
Um, I'm originally from up north. I was born in New York City, raised in Rhode Island, and then we moved to Florida after I graduated um, college and got married. So I've been a um, Florida resident for 20 some, what, 22 years, but nice. a Tampa, um, Tampa Bay resident for um, 18 and a half years. So so I've seen this area grow. I've seen yes, it. Um, especially where you are. It's, <laughs> yes. I, I spend a lot of time back and forth on 54 and um, just over the past 24 months, the yes. amount of change that has happened and what's coming next is, is uh, north of us, you know, up, up 41, exactly. it's going to even be a bigger boom there. So there's definitely a huge market for that with a lot of people coming in and needing that, you know, wanting that, you know, I, I say that retro medical connection. Uh, the only thing I don't think people do anymore is house calls, but that would be the, that would be retro retro, but exactly. that, that connection where you're not rushed through the process. Definitely yeah. makes a huge difference. I mean, what is the one thing that you run into where people, where like a misconception, or where you're educating people on what you do that's different from what, um, what is, you know, what they're expecting when they come in? Yeah, well, you know, it's it's changing people's um, mind mindset about how healthcare is. Again, you know, um, bringing healthcare back for for what that title is: health, not sick care. Because it's, it's all about, well, I only go to doctors when I'm sick. I only right. go to doctors when I don't feel good. Well, you know, that's great that you feel great, but you really don't know if there's anything going on with you unless you speak to someone. Or we can see something before something happens, right? Little signs, that little symptoms that you may experience that you may not think um, it's something to worry about. Because a lot of times people get big surprises. Unfortunately, they've never been to the doctor in years because I feel great. And then unfortunately they get some bad news, right? right? So so trying to prevent that. And just how and and also because of how our society is, um, you know, getting that focus back into making sure we're eating well, we're staying active, we're we're staying um, you know, exercising because we can prevent a lot of these health issues that we have if we just take care of our bodies. So teaching people at a young age, I love working with young adults. You know, and like, don't wait until you're in your 40s or 50s and you're falling apart to come yeah. see. <laughs> Creating that healthy habit early rather than later is definitely exactly. advantageous. You know, it's funny. I had a very fortunate opportunity to meet Jack LaLanne. You know who Jack LaLanne is, right? Like the, <laughs> the, the inventor of basically the modern gym type of guy, right? Yep. Calisthenics. The nicest guy. I think I met him. He was probably in his 80s by the time I met him. And had a one-to-one -one conversation at a at a party with him. Uh -huh. The absolute coolest guy you would ever meet. You would never think he was in his probably late seventies, early eighties. Mm -hmm. um, and his biggest thing was, you know, proactively understanding your body and mm -hmm. how it reacts to certain things. And his thing was, if you're in tune with your body, you know, you should be able to tell when something's out of whack, even in the yeah. slightest. And and it's funny even stuff like your eating habits, right? Like I know for me, I took care of my parents yeah. and my dad was on a drug called Coumadin. Yeah. Coumadin is a, is a blood thinner. I mean, you're a doctor. I don't have to explain to you what the drug is, yeah. but it, it's such an, the drug's been around since the thirties. I think it's when it first was yeah. created. And yeah. it's one of these drugs where you have to finally, um, you know, not to get too technical with people listening to this, but there's a thing called an INR level. You have to yeah. maintain a certain therapeutic level my dad would eat a salad at dinner and the vitamin K in the salad would throw his body off. So knowing that ability to know where your body is going to be off is vital and starting those habits earlier rather than later yes. really, really is a great way to take this therapeutic, you know, uh, organic approach to medical health care rather right. than I'm sick. I get stitches. I have a cut. I get sick. You want to kind of avoid that that um that overreaction to your healthcare which is great and uh training people early is is definitely the best the best yes. way to go yes correct you have a very you have a very um a, a, a medical designation a professional designation that is very heady you know i i talk to doctors lawyers um all these professionals veterinarians all these doctors and lawyers and these people that have these designations yeah. And the one question I always love asking them because it, it kind of flips it a little bit is what yeah. do you like to do for fun when you're not helping people? What is your Zen enjoyment that you get to go out and do where it's just you or you and your family? 
I love to travel. <laughs> so, um, so, you know, I mean, everyone does, right? But that's one of the things that, um, you know, with how my practice is set up, I have the, the, um, I have the ability to still travel and take care of my patients because my oh, well. patients, ha exactly, no matter if I'm on vacation or I'm in the office, my patients still have access to me. So I, I do travel a bit. Um, that doesn't mean I'm not in the office, but you know, if I'm out of the office, I, I still see my patients. So I go out of the country, we go throughout the country. Our, our daughter is a gymnast at Michigan State University. So we travel a lot um, following the team, going to their competitions. We just got back yesterday from Michigan State at their home, you know, they had their home opener. So we just love to go around the country and see things. Okay, uh, is that East Lansing? I mean, East Lansing yeah. is not a vacation location. So let's, no. let's, side, let's <laughs> sidetrack for a second. The first question I have is, because one of my questions, and I did write it down as you were talking is, if yeah. you have people that get next day, same day or next day appointments, the yeah. telehealth is vital or else you never get to go on vacation unless you have a team of people. But that was one of my right. questions. But right. now that you've brought up traveling, okay, yeah. I yeah. need to know, number one, where is the last place you went? Now I don't want to hear about East Lansing, Michigan, okay? <laughs> I want to know where's the last place you and your husband without the kids went on vacation or with the kids, you, with that, where you went on vacation where you would recommend. And number two, I need to know where's your bucket list spot to go to. Okay. All right. Well, that, you know, my husband and I were empty nesters now, so we could just easily get up and go, right? So, um, I mean, we've we've been down to the Caribbean. We've been been down to Mexico. Um, we've All right. Been, so, time out. Caribbean. Yeah. What's the best spot that you? Because I know my favorite spot in the Caribbean. Yeah. What was your favorite island in the Caribbean? Well, number one is my island where I'm from, which is Dominican Republic. And I've been there. I've been, had a good time there. <laughs> so there's uh, lots of beautiful places you can go to the Dominican Republic because it's such a huge island. Um, I'm going to Punta Cana in April, so I will report back on that trip. My favorite okay. spot is St. Martin. is the nicest island I've ever been to personally. Mm -hmm. um, but, okay, so if if the Dominican is your island, that's kind of like going home, right? Like that's going home. You, I'm, do you see family and stuff there when you're there or no? Um, yes, we do. Um, but we, we still go and, you know, explore and stay in different parts of the island, like Puerto Plata, Santiago. You got to go into the city. You got to go to Santo Domingo. There's La Romana. There's so many beautiful places. You okay, so go. that's your home island. If I'm going to Punta Cana, I'm going to be at a resort. Yeah. But have you been to Punta Cana? I have. Tell me a secret uh, native spot for me to go. Because I'm going to write it down. What's a native well, spot for me to go? Punta Cana is not your best one to, to pick because it's a touristy spot. It's a tourist spot. Okay. Yeah, so there's, no the hidden gem. there's no little hidden gem in Punta Cana that I could escape yeah. to to go to? You got to go in the island. You got to go to the other towns like La Romana. You got to go to, you know, um, to uh, Puerto Plata. You got to go to Santiago. You know, I, I, if you want a really um, local, traditional, you know, Dominican spot, you have to go into where where we live. <laughs> All right. Well, then forget it. I'm going to stay in the resort. I'm going to stay out of trouble. If I was bilingual and spoke Spanish better, I would feel more comfortable going there because yeah. I know when they see me, they're like, oh, this American, let's yeah. let's take them off to the side of the island and charge them a whole bunch of money yeah. to do whatever. I have a solution do. for you. Just go take ahead, them with you and you won't have any problems. Listen, I, it, when I... <laughs> If I had an extra ticket, I would love to take a doctor with me. That would work perfect. Exactly. All right, so now give me your bucket list, okay? Not the home mm -hmm. island and going to see family and the little hot spots. If I said to you right now, budget is no object, mm -hmm. where do you want to go? What's the spot you and your husband want to go? Fiji. Fiji. Yeah. I always see these like Bali and Fiji, these huts on a, like on yeah. the water where yeah. you like have a cabin and you have a, a pool, um, a glass bottom floor. Yeah. I think look amazing. Yeah. And then I think of the stupid tsunami that <laughs> like, that's where I always go. It always kills me, but those do look amazing in the flight, but you got to go to a place like that for at least 10, 12 days because yeah. the it's flight, just to, get, to get away from everything. Where everything, no phones, no be, nothing. Disconnected from everything and everyone. So yeah. That's, so Fiji that's, is the spot. That's where mm -hmm. you're going. If you're getting away. 
So if I go there, my patients will know ahead of time, look, I'm going to be unavailable for two weeks. What do you Call need somebody right else. now? <laughs> You're going to have to have coverage. You're going to have to find another yes. an overflow doc. Okay, exactly. so, so let me ask you this. One of the questions I always like to ask when I talk to successful people is, mm -hmm. let the people listening to this know or watching this know, where's there been a challenge in your life where you said, you know what? I, I might throw in the towel and go in a different direction or – you know, I've overcome it and gotten past it where I've been able to work through it. Tell us about that challenge that you've overcome. Um, I think the challenge that, um, you know, for me was, was COVID, not, not um, me personally going through COVID, but Absolutely. seeing what my patients went through. Yeah. yeah. You know, the, um, the lack of, of accessibility that my patients had, but also the lack of care. It was like, you know, it, everyone just was trying to, again, we had to distance ourselves, but I felt like my patients really, um, they, they really suffered. And so because of that was when I, I was like, I can't do this, you know, continue with a corporate position in a big practice. Yeah. I need to be able to provide more for my patients. And then that's when I decided to go on my own, you know, right in the height of COVID, October of 2020, mm -hmm. I decided to leave my secure job and open my own place. On it takes my own. guts. It yeah. takes guts and it yeah. takes, you know, it takes a lot of, uh, you know, stick to itiveness to be able to do something like that. Exactly. And because of that, that's why I'm able to provide that personalized care that I do. And the great thing is it's affordable. You like, don't get the word concierge, you know, um, that term, you know, to think, Oh, well, that's going to be out of my budget or I can't afford something like that. It's, it's concierge style care without the pricing of concierge well, VIP care. That brings up a great question. I mean, when I come in to see you or we start talking about the different levels of service and you don't got to get into pricing, but is mm -hmm. there like a, a bronze, silver and gold level or is it, hey, look, this is the package and come in and you get it all. If the primary care is age based. So if you're younger and healthier, less. it's it's less. If yep. you're older, we, we, you know, as we age, we have more health issues. So it's a little bit more, but it's still affordable for everyone, okay. whether you have insurance or not. So, you know, my patients are a mixed bag. Um, but it's affordable for the college student. It's affordable for that retiree. And they all get the same great service. They get me. Well, the, the funny <laughs> thing is, you know, you talked about COVID and, and the challenges of that. My dad, who I took care of the last five years of his life, he mm -hmm. had he had surgery uh, in January, the end of January 2020. And he yeah. was in a rehab facility as literally as COVID was happening. Yeah. And I think the hardest part about that, the biggest challenge for the medical industry was people really didn't know. Like they knew what, they kind of had an idea what it was, but they were literally creating policy Correct. while it was happening on the fly. Because I remember he was in a facility, I won't say the name of it because it didn't really go that great. But um, and I remember saying to them, well, what's the game plan? He had to do rehab. He had to be yeah. in a facility doing rehab. What's the game plan for this thing that's happening? And they said, well, you know, we're going to play it by ear. And we're going to do this, that, and the other. And then a week later, it was, he's going to be restricted to his room. And then a week later, it was like no more physical therapy. And it was it just the whole thing, the policy just deteriorated because there weren't bodies to handle it. There were people dying. It was a whole big you know, calamity of what was going on. Right. Um, so, yeah, it was just a wild time. And to be able to start a business and do all that, seeing that there was a need for yeah. this customized service, great for, you know, great foresight, great business, um, you know, acumen to be able to see this coming down the road besides being a, a physician. Let me ask you this, as we start to wrap this up, yeah. what is the one thing that a listener listening to this needs to take away to say, I want to come to advanced optimal health? Well, basically, if you just want a provider that's there for you, that's going to listen to you and address your needs or, you know, you're just tired of the same old thing, right? You feel like you're just another number when you go into your doctor's office. You don't feel like you're being heard. You're taken care of. Um, and if you're looking to focus on you and your health, then then those are the, the patients I'm looking for because I'm here to help everyone. So if you just want something new, just give us a call. You know, you can reach us by phone. You can reach us by email. You can visit our website. The website is very detailed. It explains the practice, you know, um, perfectly. But it also also answers all those questions. So I have insurance. What does that mean? Can I use my insurance? Or I don't have insurance. What does your membership cost? What about your 
wellness services, what are their costs? Everything is in the website. It's an excellent website. Well, that leads me to my last question is, what is the best way to get a hold? Now, we'll include the URLs and the socials and all that stuff, but what yeah. is the best way to get a hold of you? Um, you can call the office. Um, a lot of times I answer the phone because, again, I give that personalized care. So I like to talk to you know, my patients, but also potential um, patients um, myself. I do complimentary consultations, 15 minutes. I talk to people. I answer their questions. Make sure I'm the right fit for them because, you know, I may not be the right fit for someone. You may need someone else. You may need a big group. You may need to go to, you know, um, a, a location that has multiple providers. So I like to give those patients that feedback, make sure that I address what they need. So, folks, if you're listening to this or watching it on our YouTube channel um, and you're looking for that personalized care where even when she's on vacation, except if she goes to Fiji, then she's going to pass you off on somebody <laughs> else. But even exactly. when she's on vacation, you will get telehealth services from Dr. Anilda Ortiz, Advanced Optimal Health Care, 813 813-330-6224. Dr. Ortiz, thank you so much for being a good neighbor. Thank you for being on the Good Neighbor Podcast. You have a tremendous day. Thank you so much, Mike. It was wonderful talking to you. And thank you, neighbors, for listening. I told you it would be the highlight of your day. Yes, it has. Thanks for listening to the Good Neighbor Podcast Pasco. To nominate your favorite local businesses to be featured on the show, go to gnppasco.com. That's GNP. Pasco.com or call 813-922-3610.